Hello guys, Almatross here, just coming at you with the second part of our Node.js development series for Steambots. Uh, you're probably just going to have to ignore my voice this video. Uh, I've got a bit of a cold at the minute, I might have to pause the video just to cough and take a drink of water as well. But I'm not doing anything today, so I thought I might as well make it, so just ignore that. So pretty much in the last one, we uh, logged into Steam and got our bot idling in a game. In this one, we're pretty much just going to work out how to handle trade offers, uh, you know, how to send trades and how to you know, react to trades that we receive as well. So that's pretty much just going to be this video. I kind of want to get it out of the way. There's going to be some setup stuff for this as well, but that setup stuff is just going to be stuff that you only do once and you won't have to do it again. And then, you know, for the trade offer handling and all that, once we get the setup stuff out of the way, then it'll be pretty exciting. Uh, we're not, we're not going to go in in depth in that because that's just kind of setup stuff you do at the start. Uh, to be honest, if you make one project and just use the setup stuff, it's it's going to apply across all projects. You're pretty much just going to be copying and pasting all your setup stuff at the top of your page every time. So basically, uh, I have made this site uh, since the last video just to kind of show how powerful Node.js really can be. Uh, so between the last video and this video, uh, it's basically a survey site uh, where users can complete surveys uh, on the survey walls and then they can basically withdraw the coins they get from the surveys for PUBG skins. So this, you know, and basically it's been like two weeks since the last video and I've made this this kind of site and you know it's actually getting popular already, you know, like well it's been off for two weeks and there's like 183 users already so you know it can you can, you can do very, very powerful things with this, but obviously, you know, we're just going to be taking it a step at a time. And by the end of this, you'll be able to make a website like this, you know, if you apply these steps. Uh, so, without any more self-promotion, let's just get straight into it. And so, the first thing that you're going to want to do is... we're Oh, sorry, I actually forgot to mention the last time I wanted to just clear this up. If you want to actually change your name to a custom name in Steam whenever you launch your bot, uh, you can actually just pass, pass on a second parameter in here, and this is just going to basically be like, Node.js tutorial, now that, you know, like I could do that, I actually don't want my bot to change the name, so I'm just going to leave that blank, and for, for games played as well, you can actually pass in uh, like a custom name of a game that you want, so you could actually just put in like, well, Node.js tutorial, as your custom game, and then it will come up with your in-game Node.js tutorial. So, firstly, for handling trade offers, we're going to want to require two new modules at the top here. So the first one's going to be Steam Community. Okay, so once we've got that, then the second one's just going to be Steam Trade Offer Manager. I'm just going to call it Steam Trade Offer no, I should, yeah, yeah, just, just trade offer manager. And this is going to be require. It's actually called Steam Trade Offer Manager, if I remember right. And that's us sorted for requiring these. You'll, you'll go back and install them, but you guys will know how to do that now because I taught you how to do that in the last tutorial. So, down here now. We're basically just going to define another variable called community. And this is just going to be called new Steam community. And as well, we're going to want to define a manager variable as well. And this is going to be a new instance of Steam Offer Manager, right? So you're going to want to pass in a, a, an object of options into here. So for Steam, client, for community, we're just going to pass in our community variable as well. And then for the language is just going to be English, right? Or well, yep, that needs to be in quotation marks. So for this, I'm not going to go too much in detail with what this does. It basically just gives us more custom customizability in the future uh, for having these variables, you know, inside this object that would be generated for us anyway. But this just gives us more customizability. So next thing, we're going to want to add an event listener. So once the client's logged on, once we get a web session, so you'll know how to do this. Client.onWeb session. We're going to want to set our cookies. So basically, we're just going to pass like a callback function in here. Um, we get a session ID and cookies back. So we're just going to call these variables SID and cookies. So what are we going to want to do in here then? We're going to want to do manager.setCookies. Set cookies for the manager. Pass in the cookies. 
and for then we're going to want to do the same thing for community and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to start a, a confirmation checker so check uh, you, you know like the uh, the steam desktop authenticator the confirmations uh, in there so basically you're going to want to start a checker and you can actually uh, you can set a time for that so we're going to want to do Community dot start confirmation checker is yes, all the syntax is very very easy here. So um, the first parameter is going to be the time in milliseconds. So twenty or sorry yeah twenty thousand milliseconds is twenty seconds, and I think that this is this is perfect because uh, I don't think you'll get timed out if you've got it set on this. Like Steam won't block your uh, your confirmation checking if it's set on twenty seconds. And the second parameter is going to be your identity secret. Okay, so before in the config, we had these three here. So we're going to want to add a comma here. And we're going to want to add a fourth identity secret in here. And in here is basically just going to be your identity secret. And so basically, all you're going to want to, after you've done that and saved that, you're basically just going to want to do config.identity secret. And there it is. Okay then guys, so now we basically have our client, community and manager all logged into Steam. So obviously we want to do something with this. Uh, so basically what we're first going to do is we're going to handle incoming trades. So basically, you know, your manager, your trade offer manager is going to want to listen out for a new offer coming in. Uh, so can you basically just take a guess what the event listener is called? The event listener is called new offer. So basically it's going to be our manager that listens out for this. And as I said, the event is called new offer. Okay, so we're going to have a function in here with offer as the parameter. So basically, uh, well, first of all, we could just console.log offer detected. All right, so now we're basically just going to check and see if the uh, if the person sending the trade. Uh, so basically, you know, we're not want to we're not going to want to accept you know, trades from random people. We're only going to want to, you know, just for the purposes of this, of showing you how it works, we're just going to want the bot to only accept an offer if it's you. So, we can actually uh, check the Steam uh, 64 of the person who's sending, uh, who's sending the trade by doing offer.partner.get Steam ID 64. Okay, and so if this is equal to, and then I'm just going to put like your Steam 64. Now you would put your Steam 64 in there. I'm going to fill it in just a second. I'm not going to get it right now. Then we're basically just going to accept the offer at this point by using a method called offer.accept. And so in here, we have another function. And so if there's an error while accepting, we're just going to console.log error. And if there's no error, we can console.log. Well, for now, I'm just going to console.log the status of the trade. So what this here will do is accept any offer that comes through from your Steam ID. So, obviously, we're not going to want all the offers to sit about uh, if it's not our Steam 64. So if it's busy, if it's not our Steam 64, we can just simply add another else in here at the bottom. So we can basically just do offer.decline. Uh, basically, uh, in here, we're just going to pass in error as a parameter. And so, uh, if there's an error, we can console.log error. And then, else, we can basically just put uh, in here, like, console.log trade from stranger not accepted. Well, just a kind. And then if you want, you can also just put in here, like, unknown sender. Okay, then. So, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in, well, I'm running this in my main account, so I'm going to fill in the bots, Steam64, in here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do that and run this and send it trade just so you can see how it works. Okay, sorry guys, I just realized two wee mistakes I'd made. This should actually be a capital S in here for web session, which I didn't do before. And also this, this is actually a function you're calling. Uh, I didn't have the brackets there before. Just make sure you have the brackets there. Okay, so basically we're all actually set up now. Uh, so if I just go on uh, to my offers for the bot account, uh, as you can see, well, obviously I didn't put the brackets in there. So it declined the trades because that's what would happen if it didn't recognize the trade offer. 
Okay, so say I go on my side and uh, we just like randomly just withdraw this. Say. And uh, I just set up for the bot account for uh, as the trusted seam 64. So in the incoming offers then, we should see this offer come through hopefully now. If we give it a wee second, there we are. And as you can see, the bot automatically accepted the trade. And as you can see, obviously, if you see the console, yep, we had this because there was a few mistakes. And uh, we had logged on there, offer detected, and the status of the offer is accepted. Okay, guys, so basically now what we're going to want to do is make our bots send some trade offers. So the first step in doing this is probably to see what the structure of uh, the return of loading someone's inventory is. So basically, whenever we want someone's inventory, how are the items in the inventory structured? Okay, so basically they're sent to us in an array, but basically I'm just gonna show it to you what it, what it actually looks like. Just so you can see, I'm talking about from a development point of view, you always wanna see what you're working with. So basically we do manager.load inventory. I'm just gonna load my own inventory. So we pass in the app ID as the first parameter, which I had copied because I don't memorize PUBG's app ID. This is PUBG's app ID. So we're just gonna load our PUBG app inventory. So what's that called again? It's the one context context id i think that's what it is uh so basically we're just gonna pass in true as well i'm not even sure what that means i don't even know what true means but you have to pass it in anyway so we're gonna do error and inventory so just to demonstrate what the inventory looks like literally just console.log inventory so basically that'll just show you what our inventory looks like whenever our server gets it so i actually just did that on the command line and you can see what the response is like. So this is basically, for, for each one, I only obviously have one for the one we just accepted. So you can see the market hash name here. You can see the item's asset ID. We actually get like icon URLs as well. So if ever we wanted to have, say, a withdrawal section, this is literally what we would do. We would pass in the icon URL, and then we could just load the image uh, from Steam servers uh, directly. So we could just like, you know, live load all the images to go along with all the uh, the names. So now that you know how this is structured, we can actually do something with this now, which I'll show you now. Okay then guys, so basically now that we actually know how the inventory response is structured, we're basically gonna do something with it. So say we wanted to send the floral shirt that's in our inventory at the minute. So I can just define a function here just to show you the concepts. Function and then send floral shirt. This is obviously very specific for the start. You know, we're not going to define a function for every single item we want to send. We'll just do it automatically in the future. But this is just to show you how to send a trade offer. So first of all, we can just load our inventory again. And we're going to pass in the uh, the app ID. And we can pass in two, true, as before. Our inventory, we just did this. So now basically what we can do is uh, just clear the error first console.log error and else the first step to this is basically going to be to actually create the trade offer that we're going to work with so const say offer equals manager dot create offer and so in here we can use the steam id we can pass in like a trade link later like a trade url but for now we can just use the steam id because we're just keeping it simple right and so basically what we can do in here after we create the offer is uh, we can we, we can actually just use a for each uh, on the inventory that we get back on the array of the inventory we get back. So we could just use uh, inventory dot for each and then function item. So for the for the for each item, what do we want to do? So if we look at the response here for the floral shirt, we could get the asset ID because that's like the unique asset ID of this item. So let's take the asset ID from here. And we could say if item dot asset ID is equal to and then oh, let's just put another quotation mark here. So if, if we identify successfully this item that we want to send, Basically, what what, what the uh, the method's called is it's going to be offer dot add my item, and then we can just pass in the item in here, right? Then after this, we could we could uh, set a message for the offer, so we could just do set message, and then you received 
a floral shirt. And finally, in here, we can send the offer. So we're just going to send the offer. We're going to pass in error and status as our uh, parameters to this. Clear the error. So don't log error. And if else, console.log status. Well, and we could do like trade sent as well, just so we, we know the difference between trade sent and trade received. What am I doing? Okay then, um, so basically he sent for our shirt. We could call this then in inside web session. So that whenever we get a web session, we basically send floral shirt. And the Steam ID, it's going to basically send it to my bot account. So, I'm just going to go ahead and run this now. And so, I'm basically just going to get up the sent offers just so you can see what's happening now. I haven't actually, I, did, I never even put in a trusted Steam ID on my bot account. So, the bot is actually just going to decline this trade, like my other bot. But you can basically see my bot now uh, sending the trade offer, hopefully. Oh, no, hold on. Invalid, sorry, yeah. I forgot to put the Steam ID in here first. <laughs> Never mind. Here we are. And so now if we go back to our sent offers, we'll hopefully, oh my goodness, it's asking for the Steam, Steam Guard app code. Hold on one second. Okay then, guys. So basically, if you try to log in too quickly, uh, it'll basically um, ask for your Steam Guard app code. If you try to log, uh, try try to run your app too many times in a row too quickly, uh, yeah, you'll have to enter in your Steam Guard app code then, because Steam will like time you out or something. But anyway, as you can see, I got the uh, got on the web session. Then I basically sent a trade offer to my bot automatically. So as you can see, that was successful. It selected the floral shirt out of my inventory. And yes, my bot will decline that. But the point was that we sent it to the bot and then my bot declined it. My other bot, it's a wee bit confusing here talking about all these bots, isn't it? So that's basically going to be an application that will send the trade offer. We use the asset ID. Use the asset ID of our own inventory to get that. And then for the send, I'm just summing up the video here, uh, for, for sending the trade offer, uh, or no, sorry. For accepting the trade offer, if it's our own Steam64, we accept it. Now, to be honest, in a real-life application, you'll want everything to go through the website, and you won't, uh, you, you like, you won't want to be actually like accepting an offer from absolutely anyone. So basically, in a real website, it'll just be like offer just decline, and then you can always take the bot offline for a wee second to restock or whatever on your website, and then we obviously have this. But we're going to be looking into more advanced techniques for sending the trade offers and not just defining a function for sending this specific item. We'll do this all, you know, automatically for all the different items. So this has basically been handling trade offers. I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope you understood what was going on. And next video is actually going to be really exciting because we're going to be actually creating a website next video, hopefully, uh, where we can actually... Uh, do this automatically get the bot to do this automatically so that might take a few videos uh to get that set up and you understand what's going on but yeah this has basically been the second video hopefully you enjoyed leave a like leave a comment if you have any problems and i'll see you in the next video